Can everyone hear this okay? Does that sound okay? Yes. Awesome. Let's get started. Basically the way this is going to work is I'm going to play and y'all are going to drum along with me and kind of follow the video and follow the sounds. Um, and in the meantime, be sure to grab, if you have drumsticks that were given to you, sent to you, this is a good time to grab them. Definitely look for a surface that is appropriate to use with whatever you're using. So if you don't have drumsticks, I highly recommend grabbing pens or chopsticks work. And at, you know, worst case scenario, you can use your hands and things will still go okay. But definitely something drumstick-like or sticks from outside, if you have any, <laughs> anything like that. So anything stick-like will work. And then for surfaces, um, I'm using this really bouncy guy right here, a, uh, a practice pad. So I would just recommend that uh, if you have anything that has a lot of rebound to it or is comfortable for you to drum on, definitely grab that now and look for something. That could be a hardwood floor with like a sweatshirt on it or something just to give it some padding. Just make sure you don't break anything. That would be bad. <laughs> I don't want to get a lot of complaints from parents or uh, siblings or anything. Uh, hey, this person broke like a bunch of stuff, a bunch of vases with their drumsticks just because they thought it would be a great playing surface. So make sure to play on something appropriate. Like a basketball could work too, like the side of a basketball could work for. Yeah, so uh, welcome to the dynamics of drumming. You've made it, here we are. I uh, hope the rest of National Bible Camp Day has been really fun. All the sessions have been really great. Um, in this session, I'm gonna be teaching you how to drum like a physicist. So if you see over here, uh, this is uh, Sir Isaac Newton with the luscious locks, uh, superimposer for my body. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna be going over the uh, Newton's three laws of motion and seeing basically what it can tell us about uh, modern drumming technique. So you all can walk out of here uh, as better physicists and drummers and kind of understand that there's, uh, even though a lot, of, a lot of times it seems like the sciences and the arts or everyday applications are kind of separated, um, kind of a theme throughout biomechanics day has been you know, really they're not very separated. They're very similar to one another. Um, and they have a lot of uh, usages to help and empower and inspire one another. Um, so this is just another one of those applications where we can learn dynamics, learn physics, and uh, it's going to improve our drumming and kind of help us do this more gracefully more and have a more fun time doing it as well. So it should be really fun. Um, like I said, uh, if you want to have your video on, go for it. If not, that's okay. Um, and just keep yourself muted throughout, I'll ask, to just kind of follow along. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll kind of introduce some of the, what we're playing and then you can just repeat with me and just play along with it. Um, and then also, uh, I'll ask some questions, uh, any questions that I ask, you can just answer in the chat. And then I'll also do a few polls at some point that you can just answer on the poll. Uh, so that would be pretty cool. Uh, let's see anything else. I think that's pretty much it. We're going to be jumping into it now. Uh, so let me show you a little bit about, uh, what you'll be learning today. How about that? Okay. Who thinks they can do that right now? Repeat that, repeat that right back at me. <laughs> no, that's actually not what we'll be learning today. But we'll be uh, but with what you learned from today, from today's lesson, you can uh, you can hopefully uh, build up on that. And if you're interested, there's plenty of resources out there to learn some drumming online or something like that. So if you want to learn some tricks like that, you can definitely find them. Um, but but yeah, so we're gonna learn tell, teach you the, the building blocks, something more simple that everyone can follow along with. Um, the video was on Canvas, so if you Seen that, just feel free to kind of um, help out. Oh, cool to see that some people play drums. That's awesome. Yeah, maybe in a couple more national bound cakes. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna jump in. So make sure you grab your drumsticks. Um, and before we kind of start playing, uh, what I'm gonna do is just show you a grip, real fast breakdown crash course on how you should be holding these things. Um, so you wanna take a drumstick or whatever you're using, a pen chopstick, and you wanna take the first digit of your finger and put it onto the drumstick. And then you wanna take your thumb and you want to put that on the drumstick as well, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll it back and forth. Now this is what's called the balance point or the fulcrum. So you can see on the slide, there's like a seesaw. Think of this like a seesaw, okay? Your drumstick is just a seesaw that we're using to smack into a drum, okay? No different. And basically what you wanna do is slide your finger, your fulcrum up and down the drumstick until you find the place that gives you the best balance point, okay? Which is whatever is comfortable for you, whatever's gonna give you the best balance. So do that for both your hands. And then what we're gonna do from there is you're going to just wrap your fingers around comfortably around the drumstick like so. And so just do that for both of them. Just keep them comfortable in your hands, okay? Looking good. And then what you're gonna do after that is when you first do this, there's a lot of temptation to put space here between your thumb and your index finger. So just like make sure you roll your thumb back 
just to close that space. So you want to kind of keep your thumbs on top of the drumstick. Just don't let them like fall underneath because you'll lose a lot of control that way. So that's great. And then when you approach the drum, there's a few more things. Um, you want to try to keep your drumsticks, whatever you're using, at about a 45 degree angle, if that's possible, if it's comfortable with what you're using. But generally, what drummers strive for is about 45 degrees, or sorry, 90 degrees, um, 90 degrees between them. Um, so you don't want to go like really short like this, or you don't want to go like this. You want like a right angle. Um, and then the other thing is when you kind of approach the drum or whatever you're playing on, you want to make sure that your drum is angled slightly down into the drum. And that way you'll get a better sound with the bead striking the drum and you'll get more like consistency with your attack. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, and the last thing to keep in mind is just the rotation of our wrists, right? So when we're standing here, we can have them all sorts of rotations. So traditionally what was used uh, in kind of old snare drumming uh, was people use a technique that was called the German grip where you basically keep your wrists as flat as possible. And I had a drumming teacher one time teach me this and he made me put a quarter on my wrist and like keep it there while I played. Um, that's not really what's used most of the uh, times today because it kind of limits uh, some of your range of motion. And then on the other end, the other kind of extreme is this other technique where you put your thumbs like right on top of the drumstick. Uh, we don't want to do that either. So this is called French grip. This is still used for certain things in uh, classical percussion and stuff like that. Uh, but it kind of makes you look like a T-Rex, which is pretty funny. So uh, don't do that <laughs> under normal circumstances. You might, uh, might look a little silly. So instead, we're going to kind of go like just whatever's comfortable right in the middle. So like start here and then just like turn your wrist over, just whatever's comfortable. And uh, yeah, just go with that, okay? So just a slight, slight tilt on the wrist. Try to keep it kind of towards the bottom. Keep the beads of your sticks together, and it's like hopefully around 90 degrees. Um, it's not crucial that you get this all perfect right now, but that's generally what we're going to be doing to just create a comfortable technique. So that's great. Now that you have that, we're going to jump into learning something, and then we're going to we're going to basically learn over the course of this session the biomechanics shuffle, a little excerpt that we can play together that you can practice. Uh, and then we're going to learn some physics and see what we can do to improve our technique as we learn more of this biomechanics shuffle exercise. Um, so we're going to start with some drumming. So like I said, the way this is going to work, I'm going to drum um, and just follow after me. So first I'll kind of explain the pattern and then I'll click us off like this and we'll just start playing together and we'll go into it. So the first part of this is going to be eight strokes or eight hits with the right hand, eight strokes or eight hits with the left hand, and then 16th with both. So it's going to sound like this. So yeah, we'll go about this speed. So we'll go right here. So we'll go one, two, this is going to be how it sounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 15, 16. And we're going to repeat it like this. So we're going to repeat like that, okay? So if you have that, let's do it together. Uh, we can slow down just a little bit, but that's just the general form. We'll do like something like this, nice and slow, okay? One, two, here we go. One, two, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, we're going to repeat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome. Okay, can we do that a little faster? Kind of try to kick it up a little, kick, kick, kick it up a notch. So we'll do like something like this. Okay, one, three, one, two, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, one, two three, four. Here we go, repeat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sixteen. Awesome. Okay, let's go even faster. Let's see how fast y'all can go. You guys look like you're doing great. Those are happy video on. All right, so let's do like. Uh, see if you can keep up with that, okay? And then we'll and then we'll add some more stuff and see how how fast we can push ourselves. So one, three, one, two. Here we go. Eight, eight, sixteen. Repeat it. Eight, eight, sixteen. Okay, I looked a little fast, right? <laughs> it's starting to feel a lot faster. This is good though, that's good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn some physics and see if we can help ourselves play more comfortably, play faster, 
as we get to know a little bit more about like how we should be doing this, right? But you guys are doing great. So uh, we're gonna jump into Newton's first law, okay? This is basically the law of inertia. And so what this says in very simplified form is an object at rest is gonna stay at rest, but an object in motion is gonna stay in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. What is this saying? So if I have this drumstick, right? Um, it's gonna stay still unless I have a force or some, some kind of pushing motion acting on this on the stick. And it's gonna stay still unless that happens, or let's say it's moving, right? It's like moving like this. It's not gonna stop unless there's some force that pushes on it to stop it. And so um, this one's kind of a fairly simple idea. It just means you know things won't move unless you act on them. So real fast though, we're gonna make sure that you kind of all understand this from a basic conceptual standpoint. And then we'll talk about what does that mean for drumming and, and how can we use that knowledge to help us. So uh, I'm going to throw up a poll here. Uh, so just kind of click whatever you think is happening. So, so let's say we have a box here that is at rest, okay? And we have a force on the left, we have a force on the right. So the box is not moving, and, uh, and we have kind of three options. If, the, if both forces are pushing equally as hard, is the box going to move to the left, is it going to stay still, or is it going to move to the right? So just go ahead and click that, and I'll close it in a few seconds. Okay, awesome. So it looks like most of you got it right, which is great. So it's, it is going to be staying still. All right, so let's say we do the same thing. Uh, and, and the reason it's staying still, just for those that kind of still need an explanation of that, I guess, is these are each balancing each other out, right? They're both acting the same level of power, the same magnitude. And so it says that if it's an unbalanced force, it's going to move, right? So because they're both balanced together, um, there's no motion that's being caused. So let's say we have this other one, which is we have a force on the left and a force on the right. And then uh, the question there is going to be the same question pretty much. But uh, now we have a force on the right is pushing harder. What's going to happen in the box? It's going to move uh, what direction? Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, we got some move left. We got some move to the right. Majority are saying move to the left. Some are saying move to the right. Um, it's going to be moving to the left and the reason for that is because this is pushing harder than this one right so the box is going to be moving to the left so you can kind of like look at how they cancel each other out but if you know if you were to push in this drumstick it's like a tug of war and i was to push harder with this hand it's going to move to the left and then move to the right so so there's that and then the last one it might be a little trickier so let's say that the box is uh is moving to the right now okay so the box is actually moving it's not staying still and now we have the same situation. We have a force on the left that's smaller than the force on the right. And force on the right is a lot bigger. Now what is gonna to happen to the box? Is it gonna move left? Is it gonna stop moving to number two or is it gonna to move to the right? Oh, and you have a question in the chat. Somebody would like you to repeat what you just asked. Oh, sure. Yeah, so let's say the box here is moving to the right. So it's not staying still like in the last example. It's actually like sliding to the, to the right. Um, and so you have, you have the same situation where you have something pushing on it from the left and you have something pushing on it from the right side. And, uh, and the right force that's pushing on it is a lot bigger than the left force. Now the question is, is what's going to happen, happen to the box? Is it going to start moving to the left? Is it going to keep moving to the right? Or is it going to stop moving entirely? Hope that is a is a clear explanation of that. So I'm going to show the results here too. So most people say that it's going to stay still, but the good news with this question is that you're actually all right, no matter what you put, <laughs> because this is a little trickier, right? Because uh, if it's moving to the right, and then you start to push on it with a larger force on the right side, it's going to start to actually slow down. But it's still, in the instant that we're pushing on it, it's still going to be moving to the right. It's just that it's going to start to slow down. So it's still, so if you selected three, you're still right. But then what's going to happen is eventually it's going to slow down and stop. So if you said it's going to stop moving, you're also right, because eventually it will come to a stop if you keep these, these circumstances. But if you were to keep them even longer and keep the situation, then eventually it's going to speed up and start going the other direction. So in that way, you're kind of all right. It depends at what time I'm talking about. So I kind of gave you an unfair question. I apologize for that, but hopefully, <laughs> uh, hopefully that was kind of fun. Yeah, so, so what does this mean for drumming, right? That's the real question here. Well, what this tells us is that we need to apply force in this drumstick if we're going to move it. And the goal of drumming, right, is just simply to move this drumstick down to the drum and the drum is going to vibrate 
and it's going to displace air, it's going to move the air around, and that air is going to vibrate and go into our ears, and it's going to sound awesome, uh, unless it's your parents or someone who doesn't want to hear you drumming, in which case it might be a little annoying, but the goal of drumming is to make that noise, right? So the question is, how can we move our drumstick from here to the drum? And so what I would like to hear some answers in the chat for is what forces are available up to us to apply to this drumstick to move it down to the drum? Can you guys think of any guesses? What forces can we use? Okay, I see gravity. Great, gravity is definitely one of them. That's awesome. So if I were to just take the drumstick and just drop it, I'm not gonna actually do this, but if I'll, I'll kind of simulate it, right? If I just let it go, it's gonna fall, which is great. Okay, so what else? I'm looking for one more. Yes, your arm, right? Exactly, our arm. So I, there was like the whole like muscle hand you guys were working on before. Yeah, so exactly. If we use our, if we use our, our muscles which contract and then what's gonna happen is the muscles down here in your arm will contract and that can like snap the wrist forward, right? And then that produces a force. So we can use our arms to produce that force as well. So we have two main options. We can let it fall using gravity or we can use our, use our muscles, right? To drive it down to the drum. So when we're talking about technique, when we're talking about like, okay, now let's talk about the drumming sound. Like, how do we want to move the drumstick? If you have a choice between using gravity or using your, your, your arms, using your muscles, which one sounds easier? So generally in drumming, we, we want to take a, a work smarter, not harder approach, right? We want to be as lazy as possible. So what sounds easier to you, using your arms or using gravity? Okay, I'm seeing some gravities. Yes, I would tend to agree. And most, most people would tend to, tend to agree to you now. So in the olden days, we would use more, more so would be take a lot of control of the drumstick and use our arms. Like really use our wrists. But now when you really want to play faster, play more complicated pieces of, of music, it actually gets a lot easier when you want to go fast to use gravity. Because you can do some cool stuff and use some cool tricks with the gravity to bring the drumstick down. So that's been a shift in kind of modern drumming technique is moving away from muscling out all of this stuff uh, and just kind of using what's there, what's available to us to kind of make this work. So how do we actually apply this? How do we actually make use of this, right? That's the question. So we, we want to use gravity forces. Well, the main way to do this in drumming is to relax. And that sounds very simple, but it's actually kind of hard. Uh, and so when you drum, it's very easy, especially when you're new to it, to like really have to like, you know, you're not as comfortable, you're just trying really hard to like put the stick in the right place at the right time, right? It's difficult, it's a challenging task. But generally, if we're able to just relax our grip, like you're holding the drumstick and just make it feel like it could almost fly out at any time, you'll get a much easier approach to drumming. Right, that feels a lot better than this. You can like hear and see the difference, right? That's all muscle. Right, that look, looks so much cleaner, so much more relaxed. And that's just me using gravity as much as I can to do the work. And so you really want to be this relaxed that like in the middle of your stroke, you can stop and take the drumstick out of your hand. So if you're relaxed enough, it should be like, and this is, this is a common thing drum teachers will, teachers will do, is they'll have you drum, they'll freeze you, they'll come over and they'll just try to take the drumstick out. If you're holding it such that you can't, you're probably tightening up too much. So just the main application here to, to apply this kind of law that we're learning about is to, is to play with a relaxed grip throughout all of drumming. So let's learn some more of our biomechanic shuffle and let's kind of keep that in mind as we go okay so just try to keep a relaxed grip as you play and we're going to learn a new part so we're going to start with the second half so what this pattern is doing right we did eight eight sixteen we're just going to cut it in half and we're going to do four four and eight for this four four and eight we're just going to we're going to practice that part first and then we'll just add both together so the four four eight is going to sound like this one two three four one two three four one two three four five six Okay, it's pretty simple. So let's do that together very slowly at that speed. One, two, here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, looking good. Looking really good. Okay, awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that part to, and it has a repeat in it, to the whole thing. So we're gonna start at the beginning, we're gonna play the whole thing through. So eight, eight, 16, repeat, and then four, four, eight, repeat at that speed, nice and slow. And then we'll just, again, go a little bit faster afterwards. So we'll do like, like that speed so everyone can really get it, okay? One, two, one, two, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, here comes repeat. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 seven, eight, one, two
You guys look great. Y'all are following along really well. Awesome. Okay, can we go a little faster? Can I get like a, a yeah, a not okay, let's go a little faster. All right, so we'll do like, how about go like this? Maybe we can try that. Yeah, we'll try that. I think you guys can do it. All right, so we'll do like one, three, here we go. One, two, ready, go. And eight, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, Nice! Whoa, that was cool. You guys all like cleanly ended at the same time. That was beautiful. That was lit. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna add in the next law and see what else we can learn, and we'll keep going in the same kind of pattern. Um, so Newton's third. We're gonna jump over the second law for now. Newton's third law is also a pretty simple rule. It just says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay. So uh, basically, I'm standing on the floor right now. So my body is pushing down on the ground. And fortunately, the way reality works as we know it is the floor is pushing back up onto me the same amount. And so that's why I'm staying still, right? My body has weight. We have gravity pushing us down and we have something pushing us back up. And so that's why I'm not just falling through the floor <laughs> right now, uh, which would be amusing, but not something that I want to happen. And so what does this mean for drumming, right? Like how can we use this for drumming? Um, so let's say we have a drumstick or whatever you're using. It could be an actual stick, right? <laughs> and you have your drumming surface, what this means is when we hit the drum, whatever force that we put into the drum is also gonna be the same force that comes back into the drumstick, okay? And this is super nifty for a lot of things, but one of the things it's nifty for is that when we hit the drum, you know, we're already using gravity to do a lot of the work, but there's another opportunity for us to be extremely lazy, which is, in this instance, good. Not always great to be lazy, right? But in this instance, very good. Which is, you know, now if I relax my grip right when I hit the drum, it'll just pull the stick back up like this. Like, look how much rebound I can get when just throwing it into the drum. It's like all the way back in the air, right? So I'm getting back like, I don't know, 70% maybe. I don't know. I'm just going to put a random number to it. That's not really scientific, but maybe around 70% of the energy, right? 80%. And so, you know, we all have different surfaces, so I'm using something really bouncy. Normally, a normal drum is fairly bouncy. So whatever you're working with, just try to, uh, what we're going to try to do now is maximize our rebound by relaxing your grip when you hit the drum and try to use that rebound to help you pick up your drumstick. So now what we're really doing is we're relaxing our grip to use gravity to bring the, the drumsticks down, and we're going to relax our grip to keep the gravity bringing the drumsticks back up. So it's going to look very, very like chill, like you're not really doing much work, you're just hanging back. You can just kind of sit back and just do that all day because you're just basically the only thing that I'm really feeling when I do that is I'm feeling a little bit of push right here when I'm pushing the drum sticks back down when I'm redirecting the energy back down to the drum, but I'm not really pushing the drum sticks down. I'm just redirecting it because I have so much energy right, already going. I can just do this for hours. It just feels great, right? So that's what I want for you guys as well. So let's try to do that and we'll learn uh, the third part of our biomechanics shuffle, okay? So the third part is going to be, again, we're just going to have the pattern here. So we did four, four, eight, repeat. Now we're going to do two, two, four. So it's going to be like one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay. So we're going to have that pattern again. Um, and as we do this, like I said, just like play, you know, play at a comfortable height, whatever works for you and just try to really play as relaxed as possible. Just enjoy it as much and just really feel the drumstick, whatever weight you have in your drumstick, just let it kind of move up and down. Um, I'm also using really huge drumsticks. So that helps as we'll see in a little bit, but, but yeah, whatever you got, just, just use what kind of resources are available to you from the drumsticks themselves. So let's do just two, two, four, really slowly. We'll add that part and then we'll play from the beginning again and just do the whole thing. Okay. So this is the two, two, four. We'll do like this. Just really slow. And one, three, one, two, here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, and one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, and 
Nice. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. All right. So now what we're going to do is play the whole thing through. All right. And uh, yeah, we'll start a little slow as well. We'll do like a, we like here. Yeah. Something just very comfortable. So just like feel, feel the stick wanting to do all the work for you and, uh, and try to enjoy it as much as you can. All right. Here we go. One, three from the beginning. One, two, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. hanging in there yes breathing make sure to breathe don't don't forget to breathe when you play that will not keep that will not let you relax <laughs> it's very easy to do that awesome okay you guys look great uh, let's do it one more time a little bit faster with the new kind of uh, knowledge that we have hopefully that will help you it'll be easier to drum faster so we'll do like you here yeah we'll try that right there okay one more time through the whole thing one three one, two, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Let's go into our last law. So this is the last one for the day. So we're getting pretty close. You guys are doing great. All right. So this one is kind of the most complicated statement, I would say. Uh, it says, I'll just read it off and then we'll explain what the heck this is talking about. So it says, for an object of constant mass, the force experiences is equal to its mass times acceleration. Okay. What is, what is that talking about? All right. So a force, we've been talking about this whole time. Basically, the, the kind of uh, definition for it is an interaction that changes an object's motion, right? So when you push on something, you're interacting with an object such that you're changing its motion. So you're providing a force, right? So that's what a force is. I think we're probably comfortable with that idea now. A mass, okay, this one's a little trickier. The mass is a measure of how much stuff is in something. So it's a little different than weight. And it's also the same as how much it's able to resist a change in its motion. So how much it's able to resist a force. So what, what does that mean? Well, so look at this drumstick, right? Look at me, okay? <laughs> so I have a lot more stuff in me than this drumstick, right? So I have a lot more mass. And also, if you were, like, if I were to try to push this drumstick, right, it's pretty easy. So it doesn't resist the change in motion that much. Whereas if I try to push myself, right, yeah, like, it's a lot, it's a lot harder. I need a lot more force to do that. So, so those are kind of two ways to think about mass that are kind of interchangeable. And uh, so I have a lot more mass. Now, this, this law is saying that it has to have a constant mass to what we're going to talk about. And so that just means that the mass isn't changing. So like in the middle of what I'm talking about, I'm not just chopping the, the drumstick in half, or it's not just gaining a lot of mass suddenly for something. So for, for this, it's talking about when it is staying the same. And then the last term is acceleration. So for many of you, this might be a little bit more tricky to think about. You have to think, uh, what, I, what helps me is thinking about cars, right? So a car, when you step on the gas of a car, or if you've ever written in, uh, I don't know, one of those like small, like uh, those really fun, like kid tycoon, like racing car things. I don't know. There's a lot of different things you might have experienced with cars. Um, but when you step on the gas of cars, it actually accelerates the vehicle. And what acceleration is, is you have position, right? Like where something is in space. So if you look on the screen, like this drumstick is in this place on the screen. And if I change the position, if I move this drumstick here, it's traveling and how fast it's traveling to this point is its velocity, okay? And then how fast I change how fast it's going, right? How fast I change the velocity is the acceleration, okay? So that's where it gets a little more complicated, I think, to understand. But basically, if I was to get to this point like this, I'm accelerating the drumstick up to speed and slowing it down really quickly. So that has a high acceleration and deceleration. But if I was to take this drumstick and just move really slowly, my acceleration up to the speed that I'm going is really small and the deceleration is a lot smaller too. So that's one way to think about it. And so why is this important? Well, 
this statement basically boils down to this very nice equation, F equals MA, right? So the force is equal to the mass times acceleration. So the mass an object has times how fast you accelerate is equal to the force that is produced by that uh, phenomenon. And so probably the easiest way to understand this is to jump right into drumming. Like what does this look like in drumming and how is this helpful? So again, in drumming, the goal is to strike the drum and provide a force to the drum. And that force causes the noise that you hear. Okay, so I'm, that's the goal. That's really what drumming is, is giving a force to the drum at the right time. So let's say that I'm moving the drumstick down, right? And I give it a really high speed. So it's traveling downwards with a high velocity. And then it hits the drum, so it stops, which means it decelerates really quickly. And then it goes back up into the air, which means, it's, which it means its velocity is going upwards, which means it's accelerating this way now. So this change in velocity from going down to up is a very large acceleration. And if we look at that, so we have a large acceleration and we have mass, right? This drumstick has mass, it has matter. So those two things combined equal the force that is going into the drum and is going to produce a noise. So if we increase either the acceleration of this change of velocity, if we increase the change of velocity that's happening, or if we increase the mass of what we're using, you're going to get more force. So if you have a bigger drumstick, it's going to be louder, right? That's a pretty simple uh, one. Or if I hit faster, it's going to be louder than hitting slower, right? So those are kind of two ways to think about it. So I'm going to give you four ways that we can increase the force on a drum, right? The goal, we also like to play loud in drumming, right? It's very fun. Uh, not when people are sleeping or anything like that or studying, but generally playing loud is a fun thing, is a good thing. So I'm, these are four different ways that you can actually increase the force on the drum. And from a technique perspective, I want you guys to think about an answer. I'm gonna open a poll, but you don't have to answer right away because I'm gonna explain each one of them. Uh, but I want you to think about and answer this question of which one of these uh, seem like they're the easiest slash most fun slash most graceful as we've kind of been talking about to, to make it seem a lot easier. So increasing stroke speed would mean I just swing faster. So if I stay at the same place, like starting place, I just, I just swing faster, right? Like that. And you can see it gets louder, right? It's increasing the force. That's one way. The second way is I increase the height like this, right? If I increase the height, that makes it louder because gravity is accelerating the drumstick down. So by the time it gets here, it has a much higher velocity and the rebound gives it a much higher velocity. So you have more acceleration at this change right here and that increases the force. The third is to add mass to our system. So let's say I'm just using my wrist or let's say I'm just using my fingers like this, right? I'm just tugging with my fingers. Basically the only mass that's hitting the drum is the, is the, is the drumstick. Now I can use my wrist, right? And that's gonna increase it. And then I can actually use my whole arm Right, and that's gonna increase the force as well because I have more mass that's driving into the drum, okay? And uh, don't hurt yourself with, uh, with experimenting too much. But uh, yeah, definitely experiment because it looks very fun. Um, and, so, and the last one is pushing harder as in when you actually hit the drum, you're just gonna push hard into the drum to try to use more force from your muscles down into the drum to direct them down to the drum. So hopefully those are good explanations and we're gonna look at what you guys kind of voted for on what you think is the best way to, to do this. If we want to maximize our force, we want to play louder or control kind of the force that we input. So these are the results. So it looks like we had increasing stroke height as number one. So that is great. That is one of the correct answers. And actually the way that drum lines, like snare lines, if you want to play like with other people and you have to kind of match up your, your, your sound very precisely, the way that they control their volume is they actually use heights in inches usually uh, if you're in the US and you can control your volume very easily right so this is like uh you have like usually three inches six inches and nine inches or like 12 or like full out that's kind of like the different things that in drumming terminology people will use to control your, your your force and then the other one that you guys said that's voted pretty highly that is actually also the right answer is uh is adding mass to the system and so this is very nice because actually in drumming, we have multiple levers, right? We have fingers, wrist, elbow, and shoulder, right? All the way up. We have these different joints that we can control. And so it's not, it's pretty rare that you use your whole shoulder for drumming because it's not very refined, right? It creates a very large motion. But what's nice about it is when we want to play like low and fast, we can pretty much do that with our fingers, right? And then when we want to kind of play like medium, we can use our, we can just add mass to our system to control the volume, control the speed and then use our, uh, use our wrist, 
And then if we want to play really large strokes in that, we can use more of our arms. Or if we want to do any combination, then you really get to see how they kind of blend together, like rolls and these accents. Right, you have to start using all these different lever levers in your body to produce that motion very, very fluidly. So that's why increasing the height and increasing and adding mass, the two ways that are usually used. The reason why stroke speed is not the answer is because it's actually pretty hard to line that up with other people. So it's a valid approach, but it's hard and same with pushing harder. It's, it's hard to create the same force and, and match that with another drummer and or to use the same speed because it happens so quickly and it's not really visual. But with height, you can clearly see like, hey, like your height is like way higher than my height. So you know you're not gonna hit the drum at the same time or play at the same time. So that's pretty much why that's being used. And it's the same thing with the body. You can really see that very clearly. Um, so those are kind of why. So that's awesome. So the takeaway from this is if you wanna play louder, raise your sticks higher for louder strokes. Not all the way up to the moon, <laughs> uh, unless you're, I don't know, maybe you're playing like a gigantic bass drum or something. I guess, yeah, you could really go into it if you need that. Yeah, and then, and then the other thing is uh, just engaging more of your arm as, as feels comfortable and as your strokes kind of get larger, you're gonna feel that desire for your body to kind of pull your drumstick back up. So if you start playing louder, right, your arms wanna kind of come up with it. And when you wanna play lower, it's very easy to just like relax and use your fingers. So, so those are kind of the two other things we're going to try. So we're going to play, we're going to finish off the exercise. And as we play it, I want you to really think about it. And we're going to try playing at a few different heights uh, just to kind of experiment with this idea. So we'll, we'll play one that's like really quiet, right? Mainly just kind of like your wrist maybe. And like, if you can, some of your fingers. And then we'll play something that's like a lot louder with maybe your, your arms. So we'll start with louder and go and go smaller as we get faster. But before we do that, so don't really worry about that, we're gonna add in the last part. So we're gonna do this three, three, two. So this is the trickiest part also of the pattern because everything so far has been just cut in half from the previous one. But this one is gonna go one, two, three, 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 one, two. Okay, just to kind of give like a groove to it when we finish it. This is like the finale. So when you play this part, you really gotta like, like move with it, you know? It's like, right, it has some funk to it. So, so let's try that all together and then we'll do the whole thing. Uh, we'll start big and go small. So let's do this, just this part. So we'll do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, like that, right? One, three, here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, nice, nice, very nice. All right, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna do the whole thing, okay? Kind of make it through, we're gonna start slow because now there's a lot of stuff we gotta pay attention to. We're gonna do slow, like a slow one. Maybe like, maybe like, yeah, like this. And we're gonna do it nice and high and powerful and you can kind of use a high stick height, use a lot of your, your arm, use a lot of the rebound, remember to stay relaxed and kind of try to apply all those different things that we're learning, okay? So like this, all right, here we go. One, from the beginning, two, one, two, here we go, good luck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. feel feeling good very clean very clean all right so what we're gonna do for the rest of the time is we're gonna we're gonna do it maybe like two more times or maybe two or three and we're just gonna speed it up and as we speed it up just bring down your heights naturally because when we play faster it's harder to play really high right it's not very comfortable so just kind of bring the heights down and we're gonna try to kind of use the same things at each height of how we're learning but use less of your arm as we get smaller so we'll play at like another, like a medium speed, maybe like a little bit faster. Yeah, what's that? Okay, right there, right there. All right, 
Here we go. One, three from the beginning. One, two, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 sixteen. Repeat it. Eight, eight, sixteen. Then the fours. One, two, three, four, four, eight, four, four, eight. Here are twos. Two, two, four, two, two, four, three is three. All right, let's just go as fast. We're gonna like amp it up each time until nobody can do it anymore. <laughs> so let's just let's just try it out, all right? And as again as we go, you're just gonna want to stay low, stay relaxed. It's gonna get even more important. So you see where this technique really starts to matter. We're gonna go like this. Maybe like here. Yeah, right there. Okay, here we go. All right, mentally prepared. Remember to breathe. All right, here we go. One, three. One, two. Here we go. One, two. Three. 16. 8. 8. 16. And 4, 4, 4, 8. 4, 4, 8. 2, 2s, 3s. Okay, how'd you do? We're we still, we still hanging in there? Is everyone still with me? Okay, that means we can go faster. <laughs> So we're going to go a little faster, maybe. Uh, if you're out, that's okay. Try your best. Enjoy. Hang in there. Uh, we'll, see. we'll see how fast we can go. And we can do that one. We're going to try that one. All right, right there. I'm not going to say the numbers because I definitely can't do that and drum this fast anymore. So uh, yeah, how about right here? Okay. One, two, here we go. Two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. You guys, yeah, you guys look like you were doing pretty well. Some people, some people were hanging in. All right, I think that's as fast as as fast as we need to go, and we're almost out of time anyway. So uh, you guys did really great. That was super fun. Thank you guys for your attention, your time. Just to summarize, kind of what we've learned today. So you can walk out of here feeling like very, uh, very cool physicists and drummers, as you all did a great job. The goal of drumming. Very simply, it is a physics problem, right? It's just to exert the right magnitude force at the right point in time. And that's pretty much the goal. You can do that, you're a great drummer. And so the best way to accomplish this, uh, as we've learned from physics and dynamics, is to play with a relaxed feel, to use gravity to your advantage, let the rebound of the drum just really do a lot of the work and bringing the stick back up to you and kind of control your stick heights and, and how much arm you're really using, the mass of your system, and, uh, and just kind of play in a way that creates this comfortable way. So just really, using gravity using the laws of physics to your advantage is going to make drumming a lot more fun and this same principle applies to so many areas of life you know just how you engage if you play different sports if you do different things in art or whatever whatever you're interested in really just there's so many areas where this these basic principles can improve life and make it a lot more fun a lot more graceful in the same way so um yeah look out for ways that you can do that and i hope that this was fun for you guys it was a blast for me and thank you guys so much for your time and for being here it was it was a, it was a blast that was so fun uh if there is any questions i guess now would be also a good time to like i'll I'd be happy to field them um let me see if there's anything if I you guys think there was a question in the chat a little bit ago about the different techniques to the poll for the best technique to increase the volume uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. the question was if you did all of them at the same time, would it be far louder? Uh, the answer to that is yes. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you definitely can combine them for sure. And so that's why like all those techniques are like valid techniques in, in the sense that they will increase the force. But the question more so is, you know, from a, from a, I guess, physiological perspective, what feels the most fun? And that's where the, the cool thing is like we can, learn from dynamics right like what will theoretically improve our condition and then this, the question is like okay when we're actually applying this what is the artful or graceful way to apply this new knowledge to create to improve our condition and so that's kind of um 
where you really get into the science of things. And that's actually where the best science happens too, right? Is, uh, is seeing the theory and trying to understand like, how does this actually improve life? Where is the actual usage of this, whatever it is that you create? So yeah, but you guys did a great job kind of, of, of thinking through that as well. But yeah, feel free to experiment, definitely experiment and think about it and try playing. And uh, if you're interested in learning more things, there's a lot out there. So definitely, you know, see what other people say about it. And if people, uh, you know, kind of take a different approach, like see what they have to say. And yeah, should be a fun, should be a fun exploration if you want to do that. <laughs> Okay, cool. Owen, that was so much fun. I had a blast. I feel like I personally am getting slightly better at drumming with every time that I practice. So if you all saw, we posted in the chat a link to Owen's YouTube video. You can follow it along, really get expert level with your drumming.